Want some candy? I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. I'm all out of bubble gum. Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. I hear you're looking for candy, man, bitch. Give me some sugar, baby. Like scary movies. Uh huh. Want some candy? I can hear you, so it'll be you on my end. All right. Aww, it's you on my end, too, buddy. <laughs> Aww, thanks. <laughs> What's up, all you xenomorphin slut bags? Welcome back to another episode of Monster Candy Podcast with myself, Screaming E from the Memphis Murder Men and Oubliette Sparks from Tsunami Bomb. And tonight we're crossing the streams on Fede Alvarez's sequel to alien alien romulus so yeah we're gonna talk about that but before we do it's time to talk about some horror news that's right you little fucks horror news um i got a few things to talk about yeah you You little dirty fucks since fuck you guys since gucci t terry isn't fucking here we're going to fill some time up. Um, how much horror news do you have to talk about there, Oubliette? Not much, really. <laughs> I've got some I've got some fluff mentions. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of random shit floating around, floating in the bowl lately, but uh, there's some stuff I've been holding on to. So Salem's Lot going direct to Max in October. Finally, I was... Oh, uh, I get to see it. Dude. I was scrolling through some stuff on the old Instagram, on our Instagram, and we shared an article of it from like 2000, what, 21, 2022? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, it's been such a long time. Um, so I'm excited. I'm, I mean, I don't even know if I'm excited because I'm not excited for anything anymore. Anything I do get excited for. <laughs> is garbage. Dominic just watched Long Legs. <laughs> he should have just not watched it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to get me to talk about it. I'm like, just listen to the episode. I don't ever want to talk about it again. I just want to forget about that whole kind thing. of talk about it. But he got me to talk about it enough that he was super entertained. So now he's gonna listen to the episode one yeah. more, one more stream, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> god bless him for uh <laughs> sitting through no oh, that one was funny because we really just shat on it the whole time so yeah um, that that's fucking movie yeah so there's <laughs> that um yeah excited to see it we'll see what happens number two so mike flanagan making another you know making another exorcist movie because david gordon green is not doing any of that shit anymore and Dude, I'm so over. I'm so over this. This also has to do with my other horror news, which I'll get to right Mm -hmm. after this. But I mean, just why? Like, do we need to? Do we need to make anything uh, like remake these things again or another sequel? If this happens to go along with what we're going to talk about tonight. But I'm just like, God damn, people just let these things die, especially when they're classics. It's like, why even touch it, dude? Just why you don't need to make it. It's not going to be a direct sequel to anything, but still, then it's like, then why the fuck? Why make it if you're just going to put it in the universe and it's just kind of floating out there? Who cares? We already have the exorcist (laughs) one. And then there's a couple more that we don't really need, but they're there. If people, some people really love the exorcist three and you know, there's that. So, um, the other <laughs> one, exactly. The other one is the Wolfman. There's been a lot of buzz on it since. Oh, you are so bummed out about this. Well, you're so fucking bummed already. I know you are. You're so I, bummed. I'm already. I'm bummed. Not because yeah. of the stuff they have that they're putting up for hor- Halloween Horror Nights, which some people were also saying that this is just like a promo thing, and that's not the actual Wolfman. Okay, but it's still right. Who they're knows? not going to spend all that money if it doesn't tie into the film. Right, right. So there's that's going to be something in it. Um, but I just watched 
the other trailer that they put out and it's again it's like this doesn't seem to have anything to do with the original movie and they keep trying this and it's like if you're just gonna make a completely different movie like the wolfman is fucking sir lawrence talbot he's the you know prodigal son comes back to england and or wherever the fuck and then he's to get turned into a wolf a werewolf like there's a whole thing there's lore there's an already set story to it so this one is just like a, a family in the woods it's like it's just a werewolf movie which if it's just a werewolf movie then just make it a, a werewolf movie you don't have to tie it in to the wolfman to universal i mean i get what they're doing everyone will go see it because oh shit it's the it's the remake of the wolfman but will everyone go see it Probably. I don't know. There's some people out there that really love The Invisible Man. Oh, the new one? Yeah. Yeah, there are. So. And and the people I know who love it are not the people who like famous monsters. They're people mm-mm. who like mm-mm, shouldn't mm-mm. be watching famous monsters movies. Nope. So. And The Invisible Man wasn't a famous monsters movie. Mm-mm. It just was named after one. That was yeah, it. That was That's it. All. It was about an in- invisible rapist. Mm-hmm. wife beater dude i don't <laughs> yeah. even know who that guy i don't even know who that guy is it's not the no. invisible band that certainly isn't at he least was not playful or like <laughs> at all know, not at all not at all no yeah yeah no. so but yeah that i'm just like at this point just let these things fucking die because they keep trying it and it doesn't work and even when they kind of get stuff right like the Benio, benicio del toro version of the wolfman i never watched that was it okay? No. I didn't think so. Like it, Thank as, you for confirming that. <laughs> yeah. Looking, yes, it looked great. Well, yeah, he looks kind of like a... Yeah, like all of that. type of guy. The scenery, anyways. like visually, it was fucking really good. But again, it's like, let's just take a little bit of this story and then completely change it. You're like, what? stop it. Stop it. You're breaking my brain because it didn't need to do it. Like if they would have just remade the original movie how they did it it would have been a really good remake but they they did they couldn't not fuck with it and this one just looks like hey i'm a i'm a dad with a family we're in the woods and i i get bitten by a werewolf and now i'm a werewolf which is that what it's about it's what it seems like it's about it's this guy with a wife and a kid and they're just like in this house in the woods Like, it's not, there's no royalty in it. There's nothing, you know. I mean, there might be some gypsy lady coming to town with the carnival. Um, Are you talking about a Romani woman? (laughs) Yeah. We cannot say these words anymore. I used to get called gypsy all the time. We don't use the G word. I used to get called gypsy all the time when I was I mean, you have, you seem like you might have gypsy tendencies. I mean, you know, Hungarian, Polish, we're all. There might be some Romanian floating around. Who knows? I mean, it's from that part R- of the world. Romani. Romani. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, hmm. I don't know. I'm just, I'm so over it. So over it. <laughs> just let it go. <laughs> let me live. But that's my horror news. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's I so was... much, but I was just like. <gasps> no, that, was a, that was a good amount. Yeah. I would like to go back to Benicio Del Toro mm-hmm. for a moment. So there are like great actors and there are great actors and there are certain actors that conventionally are pretty unattractive, but for some reason present so attractive. Right. And Benicio Del Toro is that, that like quintessential. He, if you just like saw a still of him or probably saw him in person, I don't think he's someone you would ever think as being attractive, but in his characters, he completely transforms yeah yeah he's it's weird because he has like attractive features yeah but they don't no, all I mean, come together as a like babe. classically like he he's he has brad pitt features but totally. just not brad pitt but they're you, you'd be like oh they're like no. third cousins. his eyes are sunken in they're really right. dark his right. face isn't symmetrical right Brad Pitt's but like, like the good-looking version of Benicio del Toro. 
you know, I but like when he acts and he moves, mm-hmm. like he becomes his character. And if his character is like the suave heartthrob, like that's what you see. Yeah. He's a good actor. And well, he no, seems like a cool guy. Like it's just a cool kind of trick. And I feel like plenty of people maybe have either like known or either potentially dated someone who when they first met them, like they didn't find them attractive. And then as they got to know them or saw them in certain and right. circumstances were like and then once you're into somebody you see them with different eyes but i right. feel like it's this certain <laughs> trick that only certain that's what being a, in a band's have. all about yes yes band members <laughs> musicians definitely do that um so do people who are not very attractive who are just really good people that mm-hmm. that can happen to albeit much slower it's a yeah. slower <laughs> it's a slower burn to getting to finding them attractive right any but level yes, of if, fame can really make a person an actor better. yeah politician apparently i don't know <laughs> that that happens but no it was funny because um i met vincent d'onofrio mm-hmm. um and i met him at a phase where he was probably at one of his highest weights um and definitely not attractive i didn't think right at all um not ugly but just not not your like, jam right yeah and um it was funny because like i brought his food to his table and like had maybe like a four sentence conversation with him and his family Mm -hmm. and i walked away being like why is he so fucking hot (laughs) and it was so weird because still in my mind i think of him and i do not find him attractive like he's definitely played some characters that have like um attractive qualities but in a very toxic way because he usually plays bad people but in person i couldn't believe it like seeing him seating him like whatever like not attractive not attractive four sentences with him the way he held himself his composure his posture uh like his almost like empathetic like speech and the way he replied it was really weird and so i definitely think some people have sold their souls to the devil and those are the people who can do that Oh, dude, totally. There's I, this... I witnessed it firsthand and I don't know why, but like he he like literally like casted a spell on me. Like I went up to <laughs> stand to my other manager and was like, why am I so attracted to him? And she's like, I don't fucking know. This and I was co- like, OK. And then she checked him out and she's like, he's so hot. And I'm like, yeah, see, see, yeah. <laughs> this conversation's funny because the anniversary of me getting to meet my like forever mma crush chris Mm -hmm. cyborg who is fucking not attractive she's scary she's a brazilian mma fighter oh yeah she's scary oh i know yeah scary yeah um for whatever reason like she's not attractive at all but i'm like oh yeah Mm -hmm. i absolutely and then i finally got to meet her me and my buddy because our other buddies were fighting uh, at an event she was at and she was doing a signing or whatever. So I got to meet her. But yeah, there's something where you're like, nope, physically not at all. Or even like personality wise, you're like, nope, nothing. But there's something where you're like, whatever, I would be totally down. It was super weird. Like I was, I was carrying Probably a, just bunch, fear. Like, a few plates <laughs> and like, like the way I sat one down he actually like touched my hand and guided it, but in like a very nice <laughs> way. And I was like, right. oh, that's weird. Because I'm not, I don't like strangers touching me, but I was like, weird. Like, and then I went to set down nice. the second one, but I accidentally, I think, put it in front of his wife instead of his kid. And he was like, oh no, I'll I'll get that for you. And like, he, he like touched my hand with one hand to make sure I knew he was going to grab the plate with the other hand, even though he said it, which is like a very more conscious thing than most people would ever be considered enough to do right and then like placed it down and then as i placed the other one did this almost godfather like hand gesture like following my hand (laughs) as it placed it down (laughs) and it was funny because it was like right after he had played kingpin like in the first daredevil series Mm -hmm. so i think he was still doing that kind of thing because that character was very much like that um when he wanted to be like around a female, like in public or whatever. And then he was this like crazy person. But it was funny because I totally walked away being like, why am I oddly like 
attracted him in Sinanafia right now. Yeah. I mean, I've always greatly respected him as an actor, but never been like, damn, baby. And I was walking away like, right. Huh. Like, that is a man. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes there's just something you're like, I have no idea why. It was but. so weird. But, but yeah, I feel like Benicio del Toro is that guy. Like, when I've watched him, like, red carpet vi- videos. Uh, and even like characters he plays, like I feel like he has that same sort of like thing. He is player. He's charismatic, of, like, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, I get it. I get it. But yeah, it's not really horror news. But <laughs> I want mean, to give a little Benicio del Toro shout out. <laughs> I mean, who knows? And what's he up to nowadays? I don't. Know. I have he, no like, idea. Married with seen... a bunch of kids and probably. <laughs> Maybe divorced, paying out a bunch of kids. Who knows? Who knows what the fuck he's doing? No, I said paying out for a bunch of kids, so he doesn't, you know, do much of anything. Maybe he's got some writing credits somewhere, making money yeah. that way. I don't know. I haven't seen, I haven't seen or heard about him for a long time. I'm gonna have to look him up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> <That's real. laughs> breathe breathe no i'm fine i am yeah. not currently attracted to either of those <laughs> men <laughs> i just i appreciate the art but i i do think it's like a wolf in sheep's clothing kind of thing mm-hmm. i don't i don't, I don't n- necessarily think i don't think like i don't think vincent D'Onofrio, even though i don't know him as a person i'm very sorry if he's wonderful i don't think he's that like caring and empathetic and over the top at like that I think it really came from a character or training and it, it's a fucking like magic trick. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, but I appreciate that. It's an art. It's just, they got that Riz. That's as a, the kids say. Dirty art. Yeah. The Riz. Um, the Rizzler. So I have two, they're super shorts. They're kind of like blurbs about other things. Um, we talked about Demi Moore uh doing mm-hmm. this body horror film the substance um it yeah. was just like a little news blurb apparently um filming it was so intense she lost i don't know if she had to lose or she just lost due to stress 20 pounds during filming which i don't understand because she is like nothing anymore right 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 like she's i think she's smaller now or smaller before this movie than she was in her 20s like she's oh i'm sure tiny um, so she lost 20 pounds and got shingles during the filming. What the fuck? Which, like, I won't lie, I got shingles once, but I was um managing like a six restaurant restaurant group that some of them opened at six in the morning for coffee and others closed at like 2 30 for drinks, and then people didn't get out till 4 a.m. and we were getting robbed once a week between all the restaurants. So like I got shingles after like five robberies in the row when I showed up and the cops hadn't showed up yet and I had no sleep. <laughs> right. So like if the filming of the movie was like that, man, this I don't know. Maybe they maybe they really pulled something out. I um, don't know. Ever. It's gonna be crazy. Nothing needs to be um, that stressful when making a movie. Well, I mean to get a good performance. You should just be able to do it. You shouldn't, shouldn't have to lose 20 pounds <laughs> and get shingles. What are you talking so, about? Some of the best, what are you talking about? Some of the best female performances we've ever gotten in movies were from like directors berating them in right, quarters, I making mean, them cry and calling them yeah, whores and bitches and sluts. I mean, so. yeah, which you shouldn't yeah. need to do. You should just be able to perform. <laughs> dance, monkeys, dance. Yeah. Um, well, that's crazy. And my other one was. Um, I was going to go see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice on Sunday, yesterday, but my allergies were really bad, but I was still like, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll go see something. So I was looking at movie times and a movie popped up that I had heard nothing about. And Mm. we, well, don't get. It, don't I get mean, excited <laughs> i don't think you should get excited it's just funny because i feel like we're always talking about new a24 movies coming out yes we are especially horror movies and there's one out right now um and brandy is the main actress in it what 
Okay, see, you haven't heard of it either. How is this possible? We have a horror podcast. We literally look up horror news. We see horror movies all the fucking time. And in a a small-ish city I live in, uh, there's a movie with tons of showtimes for called The Front Room, and it is a A24 horror movie with Brandy. Huh. Yeah. I mean, random. It's so fucking crazy to me that, like, they do these movies and they put them out like this, and then, like, if the movie doesn't do good or do well, they're shocked or like oh i don't know why this movie didn't do well i don't know because no one knew about it maybe or it was in like and then you have one like long legs that they just fucking pump it into your brain every day but i mean so the synopsis um it's probably really fucking good too and no one will know (laughs) about it don't say that i mean it's brandy and apparently it's a horror comedy yeah okay um i'll pass So she stars as a young pregnant woman who's looking forward to her first child with her husband. But when her husband's father dies unexpectedly, the young couple decides to welcome her mother-in-law into their home. It's a bumpy ride because she turns out to not just be racist, but also a demon. Hmm. Which sounds kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. Right. Um, but, But I guess... so. This, I, I looked it up since that's what, that's what you I do. <laughs> found out about it. Um, and Brandy, apparently it's uh, affected her pretty badly. She said oh that she like tried to go method with it. So it stayed with her. So she had to um, go to therapy afterwards to release the dark places that she had to go with her character. Ever. Whatever. I fucking hate actors. So but much. it's her first horror film since I know what you did last summer. I don't care. Like I'm I've... right here. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Where yeah. are you? Yeah. The best You're... boob shot ever. Ever. And um, she thought she was having her acting peak. Oh, Jennifer Love. Yeah, what? Like, I don't I don't get it. As we were talking about the movies that we have either been in or been a part of on the last one uh with terry Mm -hmm. so that movie we were in where we played the band um so they really just were like here's beer and let's everyone just get drunk and there's a bunch of squatter punks underage heroin addicts one of them decided to like try and set themselves on fire dumped a bunch of gasoline Mm -hmm. on them and it was like a, they had to shut down production like oh in real life in real life yeah oh cool i mean yeah shitty shitty I mean, that cost a lot of money yeah i mean we were just like what the like you know it's when you're in a band you see shit like that all the time you're like whatever but yeah i mean i'm not like <laughs> i was traumatized i had to go to some really dark places I'm like, yeah, you've never been to the fucking hazmat and had a bunch of dirty <sighs> squatter punks spit beer on you. Okay, okay. But for the sake of playing devil's advocate, <laughs> it would be like if you were in a band and your character as singer was like of a pedophile rapist and you went on tour for 300 days and had to do that non-stop and every girl who threw the, herself at you wanted to be with a pedophile rapist yeah that's like being in a band in the 70s <laughs> that's like that's that's what rock or being and roll marilyn has. manson yeah, yeah i mean that's like what rock and roll's been but i, I know mean, but it's I, not yeah. what we do yeah. i mean i mean i get it but sometimes these yeah. actors are just like are you are you really did it really affect you or are you just like you know whatever no it's funny like it's like they have to get the moment and everything else but no matter what there's like eight billion lights on them and cameras all around and but i mean that in itself like it's gonna be hard to yeah i mean that's why i don't know a lot of actors are just fucking crazy anyway because they are constantly playing and not themselves so they don't even know who they are anymore so I get it, right. but yeah. yeah. Huh. Well, we'll, I mean, I don't know if, if it pops up somewhere for free, 
maybe I'll check it out. But yeah, I haven't heard shit about it, which is no, weird. No, I didn't either. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, which is weird because it, I mean, it's not like she's super duper famous anymore, but she was a fucking recording artist, had a bunch of hit songs, and was in at least, she was in a handful of movies. So, I mean, it's not like she's not famous. Yeah. And if this is like her sure. first movie, or at least her first like horror movie since I still know what you did last summer, you'd think they'd really want to be like, hey, or, or they don't really know how it's going to do. So they're like, you know what? If it sucks, nobody will know about it. And you won't have to go through like just the shit storm of you being in some crappy movie that everyone's going to talk about how crappy it was. Right. But, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Right. Jesus Christ. <sighs> All right. You got anything else? Um, yeah. The only other one is Seeds is out. Mm. I didn't know it was out, but. It's not out to the public, but it's hitting the. um. The festival. The fest or... right now. And I'm very excited and I want to see it. And yeah. Well, is, that's is, the extent of my news. <laughs> is it? Is there like a date of when it's going to be released nationally? Maybe. Let's see. Um, no, it just says September sixth for the Toronto Film Festival. Hmm. Okay. Well. So we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll at least get to streaming or something. But reviews so far are good. It's got like an 8 out of 10 on IMDb, which is great for a first writer-director movie. Yeah. Well, we shall see with that one as well. Again, I mean, it'll... I'm excited. It has so many good actors in it, and I like that they came out for her. And I like that maybe our, maybe our song made the cut. I don't know. They said yeah. they're going to use it, but I haven't seen the movie. We could have been cut. She didn't tell you? You should just ask her. Be like, hey, dude. Is it in there? Well, I mean, when she reached out, she's like, dude, I want to put your song in there. And we sent her posters because I guess in the main person's room, they have a bunch of posters. So we sent okay. them stuff to like come in. Right. Them and, That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it, they paid us for it. So, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I'm sure it's in there. Big wampum. Not big wolf. <laughs> we took it. We we would have taken nothing, but we took something. Right, right, right. Well, you just know. excited to be a part of it. As you should be. Well, cool. Yeah, I don't have anything else. And if you don't have anything else, then we will leave this part of the show. So that's been. That's right. It's been Horror News brought to you by Time Bomb Toys. Go check them out at 300 Camp Horn Road in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or at timebombtoys.com for all your horror needs. So I just want to say yeah. <laughs> that you did such a good job at that, but you sounded exactly like you. No <laughs> weird voice at all. Right. But people, if you could see him doing that, he was making like a Joseph Gordon Levitt face. He had I like was. squinty eyes and was being very proper and eyebrow raised. And if, was, if I would have had a suit on, it would have fucking, you know, it tied been, the whole thing. <laughs> perfect. Crazy. Time bomb toys. Good. Some yeah. good acting. There you go. Anyway. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> we got some time bomb toys. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. All right. Alien Romulus. Betty Alvarez. The sequel in a, in a long, long line of alien sequels. Um, what do we want to start with? What we liked or what we didn't like? I mean, you know, I don't care. I just like talking about it. You're the one who likes structure. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, when it's just us, it's not too bad. Sometimes we get While people scavenging that... the deep <laughs> ends of a derelict space station. A group of young space colonists come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe. Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, like I was saying in horror news, I just think they need to just 
let sleeping dogs lie on some things. The Alien franchise being one of them. Not that this was a bad movie. There are definitely things I liked about it. Like I love the effects. They were practical. Tippett Studios did some stuff. David fucking Johnson. Right. Um, what else? What else did I like? Uh, I th- in general, I thought it was like a fine movie. A so fine much- movie? Yeah. Wow. Like, like it, was, it was fine. It's a real fine movie. Yeah, yeah it's top of the Ow. pops there. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I liked, there's certain, there's like aspects of it I liked. Like I liked the droid, the androids. <laughs> they were like, to me they were the best actors even though they one were of them so was good real, right um <laughs> and i mean again the xenomorph looked cool they've gotten a little weird throughout the alien evolution <laughs> <laughs> they've definitely gotten a little weird looking um this one since it's taking place in between the first and the second one Still looked like the xenomorph we grew up with. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Which so I liked that. Um, I did like I I liked how they tried to kind of keep the feel of the original one, where it was a lot of real dark. I mean, like in lighting wise, but then there'd be like a contrast, like when they find the android, you know, in in the room and everything's bright. Like, I liked the clinical brightness versus, like, the really dark, kind of creepy darkness. So, that was cool, and I liked that it was more of a horror movie. Um, And that's kind of where the stuff ends for me, where I liked it, because then it started getting into a lot of just redundant things. But I'll I'll let let you go. I'll let you go on from there. I'm uh, picking up what you're putting down. Uh huh. And I agree on some of these. Uh, David fucking Johnson, if he doesn't win an award for this, I'm going to be pissed. If nothing comes out of this movie other than him winning something, I will be happy. Um, he did such a fucking good job. He did a great job. You know, the whole alien franchise and their kind of AI or cyborg characters to me have always been uncomfortable which i think they're supposed to be because you're like finding these ways to connect with them but yet you shouldn't because of what they are right but i never felt like they totally nailed it i was always way more put off by them than some of the main characters or um even support characters um Mm -hmm. And I didn't even understand a lot of the animosity for the people who didn't like them. This was the first, I think, in all of the Alien movies where I really felt bad for a non-human, like a robot. Right. Like, well, he... like I, I felt for him and I was rooting for him when he was getting pissed. I'm like, yeah, fuck them. Fuck them. Like, yeah, they're dicks. They're, they don't give a fuck about you. Like, take over cool yeah he did um, a good job of of the switch too between the like oh i'm kind of helpless and i'm this pacifist thing that mm-hmm. you know you're not supposed to hurt humans robot. right yeah to the you know all right well I'm i think gonna... even the in between too like when he first kind of became smart but didn't actually like have the full new directive mm-hmm. um just the acting quality of switching between being this kind of like not fully functioning robot that would be a person people would think as like someone with special needs to like straight up I'm smart as fuck to straight up not only am I smart as fuck I don't give a fuck about you anymore I have a new directive and I'm gonna do what I want and And you can't stop me Right. And then the other main character kind of being the one who always protected him when he was this like dumbass broken robot, even though she had plans on leaving him to go to this new world, which he didn't know about and him finding out about it when he's still kind of dumb and then knowing about when he's smart and then knowing about when he's like, fuck you all. And then her feeling hurt, which is hilarious. Right, right, right. And to me, so like something that would totally happen. (laughs) 
especially with the new generation. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm the victim. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like it had a good dose of new for new watchers and younger people than myself. Yeah. But I also feel like, and, and I will once it comes out, I feel like you might really be able to watch this between Alien and Aliens. And it might have a cohesive story. Obviously, there's going to be certain things that no matter what they did, <clears throat> are gonna they're gonna tip you off that it's a newer movie. But I, I think they did a good job. I think they really paid attention to the original films. I loved hearing that the director actually had like um, tape recorders hidden mm-hmm. everywhere, even like near dressing rooms and stuff that would just play the alien noises and like freak people out. Right. He hired most of the practical effects teams from like the original Alien or the people that they trained. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that was really smart. So much I find like shitty about a lot of these reboots or different or sequels or whatever is that um, the directors and writers are really like trying to showcase themselves. Right, right. Like no, ma- no matter how much they love the original stuff, they're like, yeah, but look what I can do. Look what I can do. I, I do feel like the director with this movie was like, I'm not going to do that. Like, I want to pay attention to what's been done before and kind of try to expand on that. Yeah. Well, he definitely paid attention and wanted to do the original justice since it was going to, especially since it was going to be like an in-between Mm-hmm. sequel from the first and second one um for me like i just i hate i hate the cast like not all of them like i said i think the droids did the best in ian home even okay. though who did you like from the original cast though i mean i just liked i liked all the people in the original cast like i would they were just all kind of believable i liked them i liked all those actors Ugh, um I did not the i just don't like the kids like i just don't like that age range get off my lawn (laughs) yeah i just don't because no matter what movie aren't they they the age range of the people in alien no these kids are all like 21 25 the guys in alien were like i mean sigourney weaver was younger but everyone else was close close to in their 30s i believe or older 30 between 30 and 40 maybe even older than that but I'd have to go back and check. It's the 80s or the 70s, late 70s. So they may be fucking 27 or 31, but look 50 because that's that's how people looked mm-hmm. back then. Um, but no, I they no matter what era or decade these kids are in, they just are they're just kids that you see now. They're like content creators, like just the way they act, because that's just how they are. Like, I don't think you can, not many of them can act differently than how they are. So that just bugs me. Um, for me, the timeline too gets a little, <sighs> this is, I had a problem with this just the same way I had a problem with Prometheus. Cause I just had to watch Prometheus again. Cause there was some shit where I'm like, what, what so Prometheus to me was a pile of shit. Right. It wasn't a p- complete pile of shit, but it's like definitely the the sub all lore, my favorite word, movie. It's like <laughs> no bite and like also confuses some shit that you're like, what? There's what? so much I, confusion. What is what? With, Why with is this that an movie? alien movie? <laughs> right. Right. That one gets so confusing because there's some. There, can we just talk about it for one second? Because we don't even have to sure. ever do that sure. movie. Of course we can. Let's go ahead. Right. So, I mean, there's so many things that happen in Prometheus that you're like, well, where was that in any of the movies? Alien. Like when they go there and they find the stuff, like the first opening scene when they're walking into the spaceship in Alien, they see some, I mean, I guess he's not giant, but he's some like big guy on some giant gun. He's still dead in the gun, which was the guy supposedly that crashed, but in Prometheus, like towards the end, who ends up making the fucking xenomorph from the giant human squid monster. Like there's so much shit in there, Mm -hmm. but in that whole thing. So that guy gets out, the big white guy gets out and tries to attack the chick in Prometheus towards the end. 
So he's not in the gun anymore. So he's not, he's not there. Right. right. And as the, as, uh, Idris Elbus, whatever that guy's name, I can't remember his name. Is that Idris Elbus? Uh, Idris Elba? Yeah. 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 Um, when he crashes their ship into he that is an ship. attractive man. Right. But he, so he blows off the, there's a little tiny escape pod that the chick that Charlie's Theron goes out on. And then there's like the, uh, like a bigger escape pod that has like the infirmary in it or whatever that the chick who got impregnated by her dude mm, yeah. <laughs> gives birth to this good monster. And she locked it in the fucking, the, the, the little fucking uh, capsule thing where she was getting surgery or she got her C-section. Anyway, none of those things are there when they land on the planet an alien. And you're like, there's mm-hmm. all this stuff. Like there's just a lot of shit that doesn't make sense. And that's the biggest problem I had with. Well, that opens up a whole thing to make another movie between those. Right, right. There's so much. And the whole fucking timeline where it's like, you got to watch this one and then that one. And then, you know, there's just like 70 years between them all, but then they're all kind of happening. But the same with this, I just thought there was like too much story sure. that got into it. Where could it easily have been like these fucking asshole kids are like, hey, let's it didn't they didn't even need to really have a reason they could have just been on a mission and like because it was just doing a bunch of other stuff that has already been done in the movies i so, know but you have to bond people to the characters I, I you guess. have to but it you didn't bond think, them to me i know but think about if you had gone in and never seen an alien movie right you need to know why these kids are leaving and you need to feel bad when they die or at least be like they had a reason to die, not just that they were in space and died. Well, that's even that's fine. Like that part. Like what story it, building pissed you off? There, I thought I thought the unnecessary droid from the past, that whole thing and him being evil was like fine. But I feel like that was too much of it. I, I feel like that that particular character could have showed up once and been like, here, I'm pushing a button and you guys are fucked for a minute and then never right. returned. Well, that, that too, because that's all that also was a little confusing because yeah. they did so many things that were similar to things right. from the first one. So you thought it was him. Right. So you're like, is and that they Ash? made it look like him. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. But then like if yeah, you was... if you realize it's like, oh, that's not Ash, they just that's that's that series of droids where they all look alike. Whatever. That's fine. But yeah, you're right. They they didn't but need to do that. There was plenty of things. They, I mean, obviously they ripped stuff off. Like it's a right, which is horror fine. thriller, or whatever. I mean, the whole scene where they're like slowly walking through the things with the face hugger. Like we've seen that, right? In every and it's movie. intentional. That's, I get it. That's yeah. like Jurassic Park with the Velociraptors in the mm-hmm. kitchen, and like every other fucking movie where Predator. Right. I mean, it's mm-hmm. like it drags on it all. It, but but at the same time, like you can't really reinvent the wheel with that kind of thing. And when people try to, it's so unbelievable that you're like, what? So it works. I feel like, I feel like the tension applications were good. I love that there were 8 billion face huggers. Face huggers never got that much attention. (laughs) Yeah. Um, They show some love. Like the real fucking, to me, peace, Taylor resistance or like fuck you to alien was the fucking human alien. Right. Yeah. That doesn't appear in any of the subsequent movies, right? Right. There's just like a fucking hybrid. And I have to tell you, there have been movies where there are xenomorphs in humans. And I guess one was never pregnant when a xenomorph went in, but like, or the face hugger went in. Well, well, that's. So that's what they're, they're explaining. But like. Well, that's why I had to go back and watch uh, Prometheus. Which was right. another nod to Prometheus, which right. is like, so the droid in that one drops the gooey whatever substance into the dude, one of the doctor's drinks. Right. So he drinks it. He gets infected, has sex with his girlfriend, chick doctor. She gets pregnant. So they, so she gives birth to like this like squid right. human hybrid thing. But the whole thing goes back to like. Do you know what it reminds me of? What? Gremlins. Yeah. Yeah. So Gremlins had all these rules, but yet some of them made no fucking sense when you watch the movies. Right, right. And it it all it would all go back to because 
Right. In the original Xenomorph. It's like, let's just look at cool stuff and like maybe not make that much lore if it doesn't make sense. Right. Just like, yeah. But these movies get way too serious. This one specifically are these. And they're like, let's give you all this thing, these things of what could happen, this like birth, rebirth. Like, they tried to create this whole world out of this one movie where things just start to get confusing because okay right. xenomorph number one alpha xenomorph of, from the first movie sure it has a weird skull in it that's and it's kind of human like and yeah. then they kind of allude to like these other aliens that were right. there which is the big guy the big white guys from prometheus and in that one the premise is there's the human creator which was Prometheus, the, the big white guy from Prometheus, mm-hmm. they created humans because yeah, they Thanos, took sure. right, right. You know, they do the thing, and then they somehow create us, and then they also are fucking around with these aliens, right? So cool, okay, that's fine. But again, now it's starting to create this whole fucking backstory where it just gets super sloppy, and then this, but it also goes back to like at the end of the Prometheus. Her baby, her alien squid baby, impregnates the human creator of of the creator of humans. So then he gives birth to like the real, like the Omega A xenomorph, which kind of looks mm-hmm. like a sandworm when he opens his mouth yeah, and the thing comes out. Totally. Right. So you're like, okay, I guess I get where you're going because xenomorphs are kind of human like and they have like a human skull in them. Whatever. But then, you know, fast forward to where this one, so they're kind of doing the same thing with the big fucking alien dude at the end. And you're like, I mean, I guess. But what happened to him? Really? Right. Is he, was he really killed? Or she? It? No, no. Yeah, there's probably there's going to be another and one. And then Aliens has one of the best mothers ever. Right. Right. Well, that's the yeah. other thing. It's Which like. Which is way fucking cooler than that thing. Like Alien 2's mother is like. The baddest boss bitch mother. Ever. Right, right. Which that's that's where the my issue with this one comes in, where it starts getting the stories start to get a little weird. The kids just going off and like, hey, we're gonna try and do this thing and then bounce or whatever. That's that story is fine. But then all the weird like, hey, I'm me and my boyfriend are are this and then, but my boyfriend hates your droid because his dad was killed by a droid or whatever and it starts to but go didn't off they this... have the same story in the first one remember someone hates a droid i think it's sigourney weaver yeah yeah she doesn't like droids you know what i mean yeah. so it's like but there was like that was just like a kind of brief over in the in the first one where this they're like spending a little too much time on i'm like dude i don't it creates this whole like weird tension within the group and i'm like just have a bunch of kids just go this is what we're doing okay you in yeah i'm in and that's all you need mm-hmm. And then get back to the fucking xenomorph. But yeah, the the weird alien baby guy at the end. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it was. You cool. know, what it reminded me of what was the movie? Oh, with our buddy oh. that that um with the, the milk? burning house at the end. Oh, uh, no. I mean Stephen there's... King's son. Oh, <sighs> what the fuck was smile. it? Smile, not no, smile, not smile, but similar. <laughs> yeah remember um, the burning house then and the skinny thing that's like yeah, and you're yeah. like where did it come from that's right. the same thing yeah when it came out i was like wait did they just repurpose that no because it's cgi but holy shit right but then same thing but then you're like okay well where's this going because none of this is in the in aliens like maybe that, we'll learn in the prequel tv series that's coming out maybe and it'll have a whole alternate timeline yeah. that weaves through all the alien uh, movies. It's and we'll get a movie much, in between all of them. Too much. And like I said, this has the same problems I had with Prometheus. Where like separately, I if they didn't if each of those movies didn't have anything to really do with Alien, I I'd like it better. Like if it was just a movie about some alien and this is what they're doing. And I mean, I get they tie him in a little bit and and um you know to give it a little more background so i do i do understand that but to me it just to me this movie and prometheus seem like prometheus wasn't fun though it wasn't prometheus was a drama yeah yeah 
if Prometheus had nothing, if it was just like a science fiction movie, I would have liked it a lot better than I did. Or maybe not a lot better, but I would have liked it better um, than if it was tied into anything a having to do with aliens. Whereas this kind of has the same feel to me, although I liked I liked this one better because it had xenomorphs in it. It had a xenomorph in it that looked like the one we're used to and not some super crazy one like they got in the later sequels. But then, you know, it ends up going away and then it gives the the, the final villain is the fucking crazy baby, crazy tall baby I, alien. I'm like, but was that the villain? I mean, it's kind of like the last one you see, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I just mean there were a couple of humans that I think were way more right. villainous than well, you know, aliens yeah. just trying to live. Yeah, I mean, realistically, you're like, well, yeah, why wouldn't this fucking baby be all like, what the fuck? <laughs> you brought me into this thing yeah. and I'm an abomination. But, and then, again. Your don't like is getting real long. There's, there's a lot of light. There's a lot of I dislikes about it. I can tell. O- only because... It's not that I, <laughs> but I liked, I liked the movie. That's the weird thing. Like I thought the movie was fine. It was entertaining for sure. Um, but it just, there's just too much story involving this alien. Cause then now it's so basically we, we come to find out the xenomorph is basically a replicant. So anytime it impregnates someone when it's like fully grown or whatever. So wait, let's just, Let's stop. Like, what's the cycle of life? So, face hugger plants seeds in you, right? And then xenomorph bursts out of chest. Mm-hmm. But xenomorphs also take humans and cocoon them, right, to the wall. And those humans, do they feed off of them, or those are the ones that create more face huggers? Is well, that's the other thing that's. Conf- but then the mother and aliens laid eggs, and those were face face huggers, yeah. And so if- what are so the people they just feed off of like they're spiders, and those ones don't have chest poppers. But no, there was a scene. There's a scene with tons of xenomorphs, too, right? In some, right? See, this is just not not very fluid for me. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It they too much story makes it opens so many doors to like continuity and consistency errors where you're like, okay. But other alien movies did this too. That It never made right. sense. Right, right. Like, like the, I said, just like not feeding gremlins after midnight, but then the whole right. fucking thing and none of it makes sense. Right. Where you have the first two aliens were just kind of like, okay, there's these aliens, xenomorphs. They lay these eggs. The queen lays these eggs and those are the face huggers. Those go right. into humans and they you know, become bust out xenomorphs. of your chest and they become, but they all look like xenomorphs, right? Right. Which that makes sense. That makes Lay sense. They eggs. They're right. one thing. They need humans. They're the right. other thing. Right. And it's like, and you just initially but, think like, but no, no matter- but in those movies, they had humans attached to the wall. Right. Yeah. In the second one. Yeah. Yeah. Where are they for? I don't know. Well, one of them, one of them had as a, a chest burster in the second one because they oh, shoot them on true. fire. Right. But then it's oh, so maybe she like puts goo on them that's not her acid because they right. are alive, and then the eggs when they burst, it just gives them an easy target. So right. she's just like, I'm strapping you to the wall, so when my babies hatch, they can turn to me's. Yeah, exactly. But then you go okay. back to Prometheus, and the the original face hmm. hugger doesn't look like the face huggers. It's something different. It's not even a face. I mean, it's right. Yeah, yeah. and then. But then then you're led to believe since the fucking weird squid baby impregnated the fucking big white creator guy, then he gave birth to a fucking sandworm xenomorph. Right, right. I gotcha. I'm following it now. Right. Then you're this, like, oh. This, this makes sense. Right. Then you're like, oh, so, at, so every time they like get into something they kind of replicate mm-hmm. that and evolve as that thing since right. xenomorphs that we know now from fucking Prometheus are human. They're part, so partially human. Face hugger, face hugs a pregnant woman and it's like, I'm going to get inside your baby and move it up to your chest and burst out as a xenomorph human. But 
here's my question. Right. Isn't in one of the movies Ripley pregnant? Right. With a xenomorph baby? Right. And is that one that she's a robot or no? No, that's, right? That's the, that's the last one she's human. Uh, yeah, I believe that's the last one she's human, I think. But yeah, see, <laughs> it gets super confusing. <laughs> so, and, but she was impregnated by the mother, not a face hugger. So, like, right. if you're special enough for the mother to open her <laughs> mouth and then put her baby little mouth inside you, you're going to have a very special baby. Right. See, this this is why this is why it's so confusing, because in the first two mm. through the second one, it's just mm. xenomorph face hugger. You got xenomorphs and face huggers and eggs and eggs. And the things that come out of the humans look like xenomorphs. Mm hmm. Whereas in this one, which takes yeah, the place, hello, my baby. Hello, yeah, my yeah, yeah, but they look like just tiny little xenomorphs. Where yeah, this one, you get impregnated, and it comes out looking like some weird, like tall guy. I know, but that was only because she was pregnant, right? But I mean, so I it, think that I think the face hugger went like right, like a Mario game, hit the baby, right. And then the baby and the face hugger seed were like, oh, yeah. hey, man, yeah. you're going to be like this Slender Man thing. And then so it popped out. Like, so it like skipped, skipped a process, but then also putting this one in between. And maybe that one's like out floating in space and it's going to come back. Maybe. There's so much. It's a, it's a very special boy. <laughs> yeah, mommy's, mommy's very mom, special mommy's boy. Mommy's little monster. Yeah. So yeah, that's where I have the issues with these sequels or prequels depending on which it one you're talking like you have about. issues with like everything other than the first two. Oh, i mean i and, love and, the and first maybe two. and maybe you're taking it out on this movie <laughs> maybe no it again this one it was good it all all the nods it did it was fine i think they got a little like redundant because like everything totally. was like a nod it, to the First and second one, I'm like, Jesus Christ, we yeah, get it. Totally. But at the same time, I feel like so many of these movies aren't respectful. So I'm like, right. I'm okay. I'm yeah. okay with it. They uh, were done yeah, well. It, it was least. a lot. So yeah. I'm like, okay, fine. Like, I get what you're doing. It's it's fine. But yeah, it just got, it got a little messy to me to have like a sure. separate side story in between the first two where this one, I guess, really doesn't have a lot to do with the first two no it's, it's like actually it's i thing. mean it's a i mean there's lots of nods to the first mm -hmm. and obviously the first caused the second right and i liked i liked the idea of the romulus and rebus kind of you know the wolf mother like the right. whole they all have the greek god thing but this one in particular it was cool yeah because the one the baby side was basically like the face huggers and the wolf side had all the like see so, you know, it was smart right right i feel like I feel like they thought about it and paid respect to other movies. It just, yeah, I mean, the, the humor, humor morph, whatever the fuck it is, <laughs> it makes yeah. you go back. It makes you go back. And the, the one AI guy, it makes you go back to Prometheus. And then once you go back to Prometheus, it brings up bad feelings. And it just gets, gets to be a lot. Yeah. So, but like I said, if this kind of was its own movie and not, like an alien xenomorph i'd be like yeah this is a good movie it's entertaining like if we this was the first time we ever saw a xenomorph in an alien movie like aside from just me not liking the kids like everything else was fine about it i'd be like this I mean, is a cool movie they all basically died i know so and the movie got so much better after they all died <laughs> after right. they all died so you have to appreciate it i do i you're do not supposed i mean you're not supposed to guess, like them i guess you're supposed to like the people who die but it's some of them not. I, I mean, some of them, but some of them you're not because they were all kind of dicks. Yeah, there were some bad kids in this. Yeah. If you guys have kids and you're like parents, you should really, I don't know. Not raise not them like them that. out in the world. They're going to be dicks. Exactly. So, so, yeah, there's good things and bad things about this, but Prometheus just fucks everything up. <laughs> yeah, so Prometheus gets 0.5 candy corn from me. <laughs> yeah oh, yeah prometheus is it actually gets something. like two it gets 1.5 or two for me it's a good movie it's, it just shouldn't be in the alien no universe. It, it as a separate movie it's 
it's it's fine. It's a two. It's cool. Yeah, I'd say yeah, it's a two. In the Alien Universe, point five because you just fucking complicate everything yeah. in a series that should never be that complicated. Cause it's fucking awesome. Nope. Even and unlike E, I do believe you can keep making sequels and keep bringing it up because I love seeing these characters, <laughs> even in silly stuff like a uh, Predator versus Alien. But yeah. when you throw things like Prometheus into the mix, all of a sudden you make it serious. And then yeah, I'm like, where are you going? It's if like you... <laughs> if five different companies own the rights to something and yeah. you're like, each one goes a different way. It felt like this happened with this series. Um, yeah. This, yeah. I feel like, actually reigned it back in a little bit and for i hope sure that the series will follow this trajectory because i right. think it lays good groundwork for that well no, i mean the series goes off the deep end into drama and like we don't mythology need that. i'm gonna be like if it turns into um a matured stargate i'm gonna be pissed off yeah yeah we definitely don't need that and this one the consensus is this is the third best one in the series after the first two. I would agree with that. Um, in Prometheus, I would too, but I have a soft spot for the Winona Ryder one, with Ron Perlman. <laughs> right? But more so if it was a standalone, of course, right. like many right. of these movies. Yeah, yeah. I think if you would put a lot of these movies as just a standalone science fiction horror movie, they'd be a lot better than sure. trying to link them in to this whole series because it was never supposed to be any of that so when you start trying to re when you start creating lore that isn't there not not just creating lore that isn't there but making it really complicated instead of just super simple like there's these creator guys there's these there's these one aliens these big white guys who somehow farmed these other things and then that's the xenomorph that's right. all you need you don't need like, oh, well, they're actually created from humans, but we didn't know that, and, you know, this whole thing. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, enough. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, yeah, it's when when one guy, it's always one guy. Like, yeah. Let's make this a bigger story. Yep. And you're yeah. like, oh, okay. Oh, boy. Here we go. Like, it I enjoy that we don't know how the pyramids were built. Because I don't really want to know. Because you know what? It's probably something really fucking dumb. I mean, smart, but really dumb and simple. Yeah. Like, you don't always have to tell everything. You don't. Sometimes less is better. Not and when you're trying to tell someone else's story, you just confuse the fuck out of people who like the original story. Yep. Yep. And it's real hard to do. This this one did it. It tried. Alvarez tried to fit it I in. like this one. Yeah, it wasn't bad, but I'm saying as far as like, so the first two, like in our time only happened, what, seven years apart, 79 and 86 or 87, seven or eight years apart, whatever. Mm -hmm. So for all intents and purposes, same time, same era, kind of, you know, so they can kind of feel it. It's a little more 80s, but you get it. And some of the same characters, Ripley, especially you're like, okay. And they're older people. You, it feels a little bit more of the same era. Whereas this, it's not really the same era because it takes place in between, but it's just not like gritty enough. It's a little too clean, just the, not the actual people in it, just the way it's filmed, just because technology is totally. way better. I it's funny, like, I almost wish they put a retro application on it, but right. at the same time, I didn't know if that would make it look too contrived. Right. I, I wish they would, because it I gets mean, you... I mean, I feel like, uh, what is it? Um, the Babysitter Devil movie. That one did a good job. Um, right, right. Same with the that TV show one that was just done. Oh, Late Night with the Devil. Uh-huh. Right, yeah. Like, I yeah. feel like if an application of that, because the colors were good. Right. It was just way too high def and way too clean. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. I feel like they needed to do something like that to fit it, to make me feel more and believe it was more in the same universe. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. It was still entertaining. I didn't, you know, I saw it. I was like, cool. It had cool effects. The house of the devil. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I wish if, 
going forward when people did stuff like this like trying to fit a sequel in between things or like a prequel they kind of they dirty it up a little bit to make the film to make you feel like okay if this is supposed to be in the 70s like make it feel like it's in the 70s even though even if it's not necessarily in the 70s in the movie but when it was out this is the technology that was available right. like it still kind of needs that it, i mean x did a decent job at that yeah it made yeah, me kind of right you know no they they used that like toned down color palette they definitely right. put a filter on it the lighting the right. makeup i mean everything they definitely dirtied that up yeah you got you got to dirty it up, if, especially if the first one, even the second one, for being as eighties as it was, it was still, I don't know, it felt like gritty. So, oh, aliens was yeah. like dirty, right? Yeah. So, like that little girl, like everything Newt, about it, like it was, it was not dressed up. The mm -hmm. most dressed up thing was like the mother alien. Yeah, <laughs> by far. Like everything else was really raw and like. Ick. and then when you saw her for the first time you were like holy shit and at right. that time that was like the best graphics ever right like, right that was fucking terrifying yep yeah well terrifying. and they like i appreciate what alvarez did when he had like the reebok shoes that the chick was wearing and that yeah. was not even but the I'm, like, same beers right but i'm like dude you know, that's, that's like <laughs> this is like 50 years before the second one these shoes probably wouldn't be existing exactly the same, you know? So it's like, it was fun. Like the stuff they did was fun. But if you start to think about it, you're like, hold on now. And that's the whole, that's the problem with the alien franchise is it's like, we're going to jump 50 years into the future or like 80 years into the past. But like, I don't know. We're still, we're in the same converse now. Well, yeah, I guess there is. I, I guess if, if the Reeboks were the converse of, of that time, there you go. Actually, I think we're still wearing the same bands unless it's 50 years Almost. ago. Almost. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. So it could happen. It could happen. Yeah. I get it. That makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah. About think it. of Converse. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's rate this thing. Because <laughs> now we're running on what, like 75 years of the? Oh, at well, least. Yeah. 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 Probably what more. There you go. Yeah. At least. Anyway. All right. What are you giving it? How many xenomorphy candy corns are you giving this fucking thing? All right. So I'm rating this as this movie okay. and not like right. a part of the series, which honestly, it wouldn't vary that much. Um, and after being <laughs> let down by so much, <laughs> I might be rating it higher than I should. <laughs> but the human xenomorph was the the only thing that really pissed me off i was i was okay with the kids because mm. honestly they were as annoying to me as the characters of alien and aliens right. were when i first saw them uh i'll i'll give it a three okay i mean that fucking guy who played that that robot i want to i would like to see him in that character again if it could be possible right and he's a robot so it could be um and Especially after things that have happened in the recent past, I started feeling pretty shitty about a new alien movie and a new alien series. But this movie makes me feel, and knowing who's cast in the series, who are much older people, uh, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Okay. Three. three. All right. Give it a three. Three xenomorphy candy corns. All right. Well, I'm not. If this was another year, it could be less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too far off from you. I was going back between like two and a quarter or two and a half because like you like that's good for you. It is good for me. Um, yeah, the the alien baby at the end. I'm just like, it just made me think, OK, so these things are just regardless of if she was pregnant, that was it messed with her, like whatever that was. I'm like, mm -hmm. all right. So these things are just like evolving when they get into us, but nothing like this is in the second one. And then the, it just made me get back into the Prometheus thing. I'm like, that's stupid. Like we didn't need right. that. It was going good with just the Xenomorph. Like, I don't care if it was repeating right. the same shit. 
that was the cool part. That's what I came here to see. And it made more sense. So there's that. And then just the kids. But any movie that has that, those young adults in it is always going to, I'm always going to be like, Ugh. yeah, no, you want them off your fucking lawn. You don't right. like them. I do you don't not. Want the, you don't want the youths around. I, I do not. There's some that can pull off better acting, but most of them just act like any YouTube fucking influencer. Talk to me. I feel like. Even though they've planned those tropes, I feel like there was a maturity in that acting. Right. That we it was, haven't seen with kids in right. a lot of horror movies. But this one, no. They were just, yeah, they're they're Gen Z. Ever Gen G what is whatever it, it is. No, might be. Um Riz, you know, whatever, yeah. all those words. Yeah. Um, but no, I I mean they were young, but I, I do feel like there was a little bit of depth to their acting. But yeah, it's hard to watch that at our age and not be like, Ugh. but they, yeah. they mostly died, so I mean, so that was, was good. Not, right. That's another point for this movie. There was not a lot of redemption. No, no. And I mean, the main character, like. And there was some good gore. There was. Like I said, the effects were great. Um, I love the the nods they gave to the original one. Um, so for me, like I said, the ending was a little weird. Just the little bit of too much story that made me have to go back and watch Prometheus. And I'm like, what the fuck? Because none of this is making the ending was the Stephen King Sun movie. Oh, we'll get we'll get back to you guys on that one. But yeah, oh, it was literally they're in a house with all the candles, <laughs> and then this creature shows up, and everyone talked about it was the scariest movie ever. Sure, didn't we do it? Sure, that wasn't smile at the end, because then the house burns down, and it like eats her head or whatever, and that was her like her emotions. Her psychosis. But was there a house with candles to keep it away? Mm, I mean, there was definitely was a house. Crazy lady? Yeah. Yeah. I think that was it. Okay. Then, yes, this was the ending of Smile. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, there was another one too. They have, there's a few movies that have similar stuff in that. So, yeah, it gets, it's stuff like that where you're like, why did we need to put this in there? Um, but yeah, so I'll give it a two and a half, which comes out to a two and three quarter candy corns for Alien Romulus, which is pretty high. Like I said, I think a lot of people loved it. Some people hated it. I did, I haven't seen too much hate online for it. There's been a few people that have been like, that was fucking terrible. But most of them are like, yeah, that was pretty good. It was entertaining. It was cool, which I'll agree with. Definitely a lot better than a lot of the movies that have been coming out now. Like, literally, most of Very them are just like, okay. Like, this has been the most mediocre era of movies ever. And it's not even like, they're not even ridiculous or bad, but ridiculous. So you can at least enjoy them in that sense where they're, oh, that movie was so shitty. Or just so over the top and ridiculous and funny and campy. They're just, mm -hmm. they're like, do just enough to be okay. Like, just enough. And it's like, who wants just okay movies? Like, if you're going to be bad, at least Long Legs was terrible. At least it was bad and ridiculous, but like, just bad. I would have been pissed if Long Legs was just like, just okay enough. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch the strangers chapter one i haven't i haven't either and i'm so scared too because you know it's done by our guy from the dark and the wicked right right yeah i don't i don't want i don't want it to so i don't want to my memory <laughs> yeah. it's just i just want that movie to be it and that's all i need from you sir Thanks. it's all we need it's all we need um yeah, any you got anything else? Mm, I don't think so. No. Yeah, I ain't got anything else I either. Just, I just don't want to see any more like humanoid xenomorphs. No. Nope. Like maybe an anthropolo xenomorph, like a furry xenomorph cross would have been cool. I mean, if you're just gonna go all the way, like do that, like go all the way. They should have impregnated like a cat or 
something. Something. Yeah. Something else. Like, I I dug we've, that. Uh, we've already had pregnant women in right. this franchise. Like, yeah, we don't need any more. If you're going to do not, something different. It's not that interesting. No. If you're going to do something different, then do something different. Otherwise, which I appreciated he did, is he kept. I mean, the xenomorph was a little bit different, but it was sure. fairly like original. I like I like that one. No, right. that was great. Yeah. But the whole thing is the original Alien franchise, even the third, which wasn't like amazing. Pregnant women are fucking scary. <laughs> yeah. yes. And like, yeah, you killed off a pregnant woman and there was a weird like xenomorph human baby, but like, no. no. Yeah. Yeah. You should really play on that more because there's scarier things you could have done with coming after a pregnant woman. Yep. Agreed. They missed it. There are a few things I'm terrified in life. Pregnant women. (laughs) I will never cross a pregnant woman. No fucking way. They are terrifying. (laughs) Terrifying. Female hormones are something scary. And uh, pregnant women. Holy shit. Like they should have done something better with that. Instead (laughs) of just. Yeah. No way. No way. (laughs) Listen to Oubliette, everybody. And thanks for tuning in to another episode of Monster Candy Podcast. And we'll see you next time with hope, hopefully a banger, like just a banger of a great movie. But A banger, yeah. We'll and see. don't get pregnant because you'll become crazy. <laughs> yeah, see? Insane. <laughs> Completely insane. This show is informative, so you're welcome, And you'll everybody. give birth to some kind of alien. <laughs> Literally. We don't, and we don't know what kind because we don't know who you've been banging. But. <laughs> Boom. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Yep. And think about how many spiders you swallow in your life. And think about that while you're pregnant. They're almost, they're almost like they suck it. <laughs>